Swift began her bid for fame and glory earlier than most. Inspired by her opera singing grandmother, she began performing around her hometown in Pennsylvania at the age of 10. Well, for me, you know, the, the long period of time occurred from when I was 10 years old to when I was about 15. I mean, I spent that entire time trying to get a record deal and um, actually moved to Nashville when I was 13. She showed maturity beyond her years by turning down the first record deal she was offered because the company wouldn't allow her to record her own songs. So I signed a publishing deal and became a staff songwriter at Sony ATV Publishing. And so I would write every single day after school because it, it was a job, you know. I was, I was a paid songwriter when I was 14. So I wrote songs in Nashville for two and a half years and eventually got a record deal. She was still in high school when she released her debut single, Tim McGraw, about her favorite country music star. It ended up going to number six on the Billboard Country Music Charts. Her self-titled debut album, on which she wrote or co-wrote all the songs, ended up spending eight weeks on top of the country charts in 2007, when Taylor was just 17. The next thing she knew, she was on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Isn't that insane? I saw that. I saw that and I was like, are you kidding me? I'm in between Bono and Bruce Springsteen on the best of rock issue and I'm like, hi, I'm a country singer and this is the coolest thing in the world. Um, I honestly had a total freak out moment when I saw that. I was like, Rolling Stone? What? Yeah. The year was topped off with a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. I'm having the best day ever. And I didn't expect this at all. There, there was never a moment where I thought that I would end up getting a Grammy nomination. In 2008, her second album, Fearless, went straight to number one of the Billboard Country Music Chart, making her the year's top country artist and songwriter. Suddenly, Taylor Swift was everywhere. I'm really attracted to sparkly things and sparkly dresses that goes for that too. So when I see, you know, I've got a rack of dresses I can pick from, I'm usually going to pick the sparkly one. In early 2009, she was invited to duet with fellow teen sensation Miley Cyrus at the Grammy Awards. And Miley and I have always talked about, like when we've hung out, we've always been like, wouldn't it be cool if we could perform together sometime? And we always wanted it to be the right place and the right time. And this all fell into place perfectly. Just a few months later, she ended up becoming the youngest artist ever to take out the coveted Album of the Year Award at the Country Music Awards. The honor took her completely by surprise. I hadn't thought of a speech, and so they said my name, and all of a sudden, I'm next to my best friend, Kelly Pickler, and I just remember grabbing her and going, what, what, and she was like, go up there. <laughs> She was much quicker off the mark at the MTV Video Music Awards in July when she was called on stage to accept the award for Best Female Video for her single, You Belong With Me. Unfortunately, however, rapper Kanye West ruined her acceptance speech by grabbing the microphone and saying that Beyonce should have won. Kanye was condemned for his rude outburst and the music industry closed ranks around its newest superstar. Although Taylor was a little upset about the incident, she accepted Kanye's apology and hasn't looked back since. Nor has she become complacent about all her early success. No doubt Kanye's famous slip-up has taught her a thing or two about the fickle nature of fame. I mean, people, people will completely jump all over you for the littlest things, and unfortunately, the mistakes that people make in everyday life um, are blown out of proportion because this is a lifestyle that I chose.